Hi everyone, I'm Christy and you're watching A Fostered Life and today I'm going to answer a question from a viewer that came in through my email. If you have a question that you'd like me to address um, or just something you'd like to share with me privately rather than in the comments section on this channel, you can always email me at afosteredlife at gmail.com and I'll put that link below. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I started my dishwasher running um, before I started filming this video because uh, this is my window of opportunity while the baby is napping and I just realized that um, that it's gonna beep <laughs> it's gonna beep throughout this taping so I'm sorry about that but this is the only time I have to do this so okay, let's go um, so the email is from a viewer named Rachel and she says this um, you state that you are a Christian, which is awesome. I have a few questions and concerns that have to do with how to juggle your faith and the state, especially since it's Washington State and not so Christian friendly. Have you had any setbacks with taking your foster kids to church? Are you able to leave them in Sunday school? I know everything is based on each individual child and differs, but just hearing about another person's journey is so helpful. Well, I'm happy to uh, share about this part of our journey and um, thank you for asking, Rachel. Um, so just to, to kind of say at the offset, we are licensed through the state. So we are not licensed through a Christian organization or any kind of private agency. We are licensed directly through the state. And, um, and so it's a very valid question, I think, that Rachel is asking. Um, in our experience, the short answer to that question is um, no. We have had no problems whatsoever, no setbacks, no issues with our faith or taking our kids to church or anything like that. Um, that's the short answer, and I want to give a little bit longer answer because I think that it warrants um, a little more detail that, that might be interesting or helpful. Um, so the first thing I'll say is that actually being involved in church has been very helpful in our journey as foster parents. We are part of a very small church, and um, our church community has really embraced us and embraced our kids. Um, we've had um, several foster children, some are still with us, some have come and gone, and each time that we show up at church with a new child, um, people just are very supportive, very encouraging, um, and always jump in to help out. Um, so that's something I'll say. Also, kids love routine, and we have found that, especially the older children who've been with us, um, who are old enough to kind of understand days of the week and um, routines and things like that. They've loved knowing that every Sunday we're going to church. Um, it's Sunday, it's church day. And kids that have been with us who are old enough to appreciate that, just they love the predictability of that. So, you know, the faith component aside, just the routine of going to church every Sunday has been really helpful, especially with older kids that have been with us. Um, in terms of leaving them in Sunday school, um, I would say a couple of things. The first is, uh, by all means, I think it's ideal that you could leave your kids in Sunday school. It gives them a chance to be with peers. It gives them a chance to, um, to engage with church kind of at a level that is uh, maybe more age appropriate, especially if they're younger. Um, the only caveat or warning I would say is that um, if you have a foster child in your care, you are responsible for that child at all times. And, um, you know, when they go off to school, the school is responsible for that child. So once you've put that child in school, you're not held responsible for what happens at school. But when you're at church, you are going to be held responsible for anything that happens to that child or that the child does at church, whether they're in your care or not. We had one incident when um, our one of our foster children um, did something at church, and uh, it was it was not serious. No one was hurt or anything like that. But it did result in my husband and I getting um, written up for failure to supervise. And it was a good lesson to us that if if um, you're responsible for your kid, no matter where you are. Um, so all of that is to say that, uh, that I would encourage you to try to send them to Sunday school if there is an adult in charge in Sunday school who is very competent, very able to handle um, any behaviors that might come or who is kind of um, conscious enough or, or conscientious enough to know that they need to come and get you if there's any kind of issues that are coming up. Because even if you're not present, if you've left them into Sunday school, you're going to be held responsible for anything they do at church. Um, 
or anything that's done to them as well. So take them to Sunday school, but maybe volunteer in the Sunday school classroom so that you can be in there too. Um, you know, get creative with how you can include your child in Sunday school. Um, you know, we've had lots of times when our kids have done great and we've had times when, you know, when we've had to get involved and, you know, and go in. So. go in so but I, I think it's it's great to get your kids involved in Sunday school um, now in terms of have you had um, what did she say any setbacks how to juggle your faith in the state well I'll just tell you this yes we're in the state of Washington and we're in the city of Seattle which is considered a very secular place that being said I would say about half of the people we've interacted with who are state employees through DSHS or CPS have turned out to be Christians. Um, not that it was kind of this big sort of conversation that happened, but over the course of time, if you yourself are a Christian and it's a part of your day-to-day -day life, you know, you're gonna sniff each other out. <laughs> so we've had um, several people who've, you know, come and gone through our, our, our journey in the last couple of years who have been Christians. It's never been a problem. Nobody's been hostile toward us, even those who weren't. Nobody has. Um, now, that being said, we are not the, Kind, I mean, the way we practice our faith um, is, uh, is not terribly confrontational, and it's also not terribly explicit, I guess. Um, so in the day-to-day -day life in our home, uh, a person who's in our home for 24 hours, for example, they would experience us praying at meals, and they would, if they're a child in our home, they would experience us wanting to pray for them at bedtime. Now, um, if a foster child was with us and, um, and they did not want to pray at mealtime or at bedtime, um, we would not force them to. We would simply say, no problem, you know, and then we can pray for them privately if we want to or whatever. We don't need to push that on any child in our home. That being said, not one time have we had a child in our home who has rejected um, either of those times of prayer, either at meals or at bedtime. In fact, quite the opposite. I said earlier that kids love routine, and what we've found, especially with older kids who are old enough to kind of appreciate this, is that they love routine. And in fact, as early as two years old, even before that, our youngest toddler um, knew that before we eat, we pray. And so a house rule in our home that we communicate with the first meal that you're with us for, the first dinner, is um, nobody eats until everyone is seated and we pray before we eat. So um, that's just a house rule. And we tell people, you don't have to join us for prayer, but we're gonna pray and then we're gonna eat. Um, now what I found is the kids love that. They love the predictability of it. We had a child with us in um, January for, I think, eight days, and he, by the third night, he had he had he knew the routine, and he he was the one enforcing the routine. So he was, you know, reminding the other kids at the table not to start eating until everyone is seated, and then, um, you know, not to eat until we've prayed. And he just seemed to really appreciate the predictability of that. I can't emphasize enough how much kids feel safe in routine and predictability. So sometimes prayer can be part of that safety feeling, um, predictability feeling. Same with bedtime. Um, when we put the kids to bed, we say, uh, you know, can I pray for you? And um, they always say yes. They always say yes. And it's always just a simple child-friendly prayer. We're not, we're not opening up cans of worms or, you know, addressing the serious, you know, hardest issues of their life, but we pray, mostly I pray that they will be filled with God's love and light and that, um, that they will have sweet dreams and that they will feel safe and that they will rest well. That's essentially the meat of the prayer that I pray for my kids at night. Um, I pray other things for them privately, but when I'm praying in their presence, that's the kinds of things they're hearing from me for the most part. So another thing that I'll mention, just because this does have to do with faith and church, um, is that when you're being licensed, at least through the state, and I'm not sure if this is the case with a private agency or a Christian agency, but with the state, they always want to know that if you are a religious family, which we are, um, 
do you have a plan for how you would accommodate a child in your home who was either a part of a different religion or did not want to participate or their parents didn't want them participating in any religious practices? And we have we have a plan in place. We haven't had to use it, but we have a plan in place for how we would accommodate a child of a different faith. We would get them to their, you know, if their parents requested that we take them to religious meetings at their, you know, house of worship, we would do that. We would make arrangements to do that. Um, if their parents said they didn't want them attending church, we would probably get a babysitter on Sundays or find a friend who doesn't go to church who would be willing to watch our child periodically. Or one of us would stay home. Um, and, you know, we would accommodate that. But fortunately for us, we've never had to do that. The other thing I'll say is this. Absolutely never take um, liberties with a child's religious practices without... Um, getting some input from their parents. And by that I mean, for example, never have a child baptized if they're a foster child in your care. That would be completely inappropriate. Um, not your place, not your role. You can certainly pray for that child. You can care for that child. You can live your own faith in front of them and, and let them witness what your faith looks like in your life. But it would be completely out of line for you to take your child and get them baptized or, um, or you know, force some sort of religious, like really force stuff on them. Um, and that's, that's, you know, we wouldn't do that anyway. It's not how we practice our faith. But I do know of some situations where people kind of feel like they have like foster children in their care. And it's like, this is their chance to get them baptized or this is their chance to, you know, and that would be that's a huge no-no. Um, and so I actually know of a family, I, um, a friend in the foster care world just told me about a family that um, lost their children, lost their foster kids because they were, they were weird religiously and they had done some kind of really inappropriate things in terms of trying to indoctrinate their foster kids with their religious views. So I don't consider that a warning, I guess. Um, live your faith, live it implicitly, live a Christian life, live what C.S. Lewis would call Christianly, but um, also recognize that you are caring for wards of the state. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just know your, know your boundaries, know your place, and stay in them. And trust that God can work through, um, through all of that, and that the love that you show them um, will, will leave a lasting impression. Um, so that's my effort to answer that question, Rachel. I hope it was helpful to you and anyone else who's wondering the same thing. Um, definitely, I recommend being involved in church. Hopefully you're in a church that would embrace your family, um, uh, your kind of constantly shifting family, if it's like ours, and would love you and any kid that you bring into church. Um, know that you need to keep a close eye on them, that it's your responsibility at church to make sure that they stay safe and that they keep others safe. And, um, and just love them. Love them well. And, uh, and live invitationally and um, trust that, that God is at work um, in and through you and in and through them. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.